All right, so now if we had three plots of land, obviously we would end up with something that looks like that. And if we had a ton of plots of land, we might end up with some nice, smooth production possibility frontier. So the idea of heterogeneous resources would be an important concept of deciding where, you know, of, of determining our PPF. We have these heterogeneous resources. We order them from lowest cost to highest cost. That gives us our nice convex shape. The more heterogeneous they are, the more curved this thing's going to be, right? If they're very similar, it'll be very straight. If they're very different, it'll be very curved. And if Robinson Crusoe was by himself, he would find a tangency with his indifference curve, and that would be his equilibrium point, right? It's just pretty straightforward. He'd decide where he wants to consume. Oranges and bananas. That would be his equilibrium point. And the equilibrium price of oranges would be that slope, right? That slope would me measure the equilibrium price of oranges on this guy's island. His income would be, in oranges, his income would be over here. That would be his real income in oranges. His real income in bananas would be over here. You can think about income, prices, all that stuff, even though he's on an island by himself. Okay? All right. So I got this guy. He lives on an island by himself. He's selling. He's, he's got his optimal production point and his optimal consumption. And suddenly he's, he's allowed to join NAFTA. Okay? So guys from NAFTA say, you know, we got the you know, North American free trade, and even though you're not in North America, we'll let you in. <laughs> and they're going to send him a letter in the mail telling him what it means to be a member of NAFTA. And what, it mean, what does it mean to be a member of NAFTA in this model? What are they going to send you? They're going to send you a letter. And what's going to be in that letter? Well, terms of trade. How many numbers? Two? How about one? Can they economize on ink and send them one, one number? Which is the price of pick it, oranges or bananas, expressed in terms of the other good. They're going to say, in the world market, you can trade oranges for bananas at some rate. In the NAFTA market, you can trade it. Okay, so now it's like Christmas morning. He's waiting there for the letter to come. What's he thinking? What does he want? What's he hoping for when that letter, when he opens that letter? Yeah. A little different? Yeah, as much different as possible, right? That's what he wants. He wants bananas to either be a lot more expensive than where he is, or he wants it to be a lot cheaper. Right? He, you know, now he might have a slight preference for which one, depending on where his comparative advantage is. But the worst possible letter he could possibly get would be the price he already has, right? Because if we got the price he already has, he'd be no better off than he is right now. But do you understand that? That if he got the same, if the letter, when he opened it, said, this is the price, he'd say, geez, thanks very much, but I already had that <laughs> price. You know, I was, I have no, you guys didn't help me. All right? So, let's assume that the NAFTA price of oranges is higher than his. Okay? So, here's his picture. He was tangent here. The NAFTA price is higher. Which means the slope in the NAFTA world is steeper, right? That's what it means to have a higher price of oranges. So what's he going to do? Well, he's going to want to shift his production. Because think about what he's doing here. When he was by himself, he was producing where the marginal cost of oranges, which is the slope of his PPF, that's how much it costs to produce additional oranges, was equal to the marginal value of oranges which was the slope of his indifference curve, right? So this was marginal cost equals marginal value. 
but he kind of had this constraint that he had to produce whatever he wanted to consume. When you are allowed to trade, he can now separate his choice of what to produce from his choice of what to consume, because he can trade to make up the difference. So in my example, what he'd want to do is he'd want to shift his production toward oranges. In fact, he'd want to go to the point where the slope of this trade line, he can, this is the trade line, slope equals minus price of oranges in NAFTA. Right? That's the that's what it is. That's the price of oranges. He would produce here orange star production, banana star production. And then he would trade with other people in NAFTA to get to a higher indifference curve up here. Orange star consumption, banana star consumption. 